Yo ho ho, welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me today. As always, I hope you're keeping well. So I'm going to be talking you through my autumn TBR in today's video. And I don't know if it's like a content creator thing or if it's just a reader thing, but I have been like overthinking my autumn TBR so much. There's something about like this time of year that I feel like the pressure's on to select the ultimate vibey TBR. And what I ended up doing today is that I just scrapped my entire list of what I'd been planning to read. And I just went through my bookcase and pulled out the books that I'm like, these are the books that I'm most excited for. These are the books that are going to motivate me to continue to pick them up. And these are the books that I feel are the perfect autumn books for me to read. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully you'll be able to gather a little bit of inspiration if you're still working on your own personal autumn TBR. But anyway, let's get into the books. So the first book that I'm planning to get to over the autumn period is Shirley Jackson, A Rather Haunted Life by Ruth Franklin. This is a biography on the life of author Shirley Jackson, who is one of my all-time favourites. She is definitely in my top 10 favourite writers of all time, probably in my top five. And yeah, I was planning to do a bit of binging through some of her novels this year because she is an author whose works I want to complete and I decided, you know what, I have a bit more respect for Shirley than to just like binge through all her books just to meet a reading goal. So I was like, do you know what, I'll take my time with it. But I still want to get to one or two of her stories this year, fingers crossed. And in the meantime, I thought I would read this. Now, I remember when I set myself a reading goal of picking up some nonfiction books this year because I read none last year. I said to myself that I wasn't going to be reading biographies. I was going to read about subjects that I don't know about, but I feel like I've never really done a deep dive into any of the authors that I enjoy reading. This is meant to be quite a sad, depressing novel because based on where she was in her life, she realised that she felt like she was quite set back based on the fact that she was a woman and she felt that she wasn't able to achieve her dreams and aspirations because of that. So apparently there's elements of this story that's meant to be quite a downer, but you know what, I'm not surprised by that. I feel like based on the fact that she used to write about women who suffer from mental illness, that that's probably going to be something that comes up within this as well. And I'm just really interested to learn more about one of my all-time favourite authors. The next book that I'm going to be reading is probably one of my most anticipated reads in quite some time. I've just seen it doing the rounds on Instagram and YouTube and all that sort of thing. I've seen it compared multiple times to Black Mirror or A24 films and I'm just like, this is a book that needs to be in my brain right this second. I need to know what happens in this and it's Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. So this is about two women who are married to each other and they've been separated for a while because one of them has been on a deep sea mission and basically it didn't go well. There was a massive catastrophe on board and she was isolated for quite some time and it was believed that she was never going to be able to make it home, but she did. And then after all the celebrations and relief that she's alive and returned safe is over, her wife begins to suspect that something happened to her while she was down in that submarine and that she hasn't come back normal. I feel like I watch a lot of sci-fi films with this type of premise but I've never really read books about these types of things, so I'm really, really looking forward to this. I hope to God that this lives up to my expectations. Another book that I'm really anticipating is one that I picked up from the library recently. It's Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumfit. So this is about a woman who for the last year has been living as a shell of herself based on a really traumatic event that happened a year prior with two of her friends. A year ago, they went into this abandoned house to stay there for the night. And what happened there that night has not been able to leave her mind since, as three of them went in, but only two of them came out the following morning. So what she's faced to do is that she has to re-enter this abandoned house in order to save her friend who never made it out. There seems to be a lot of really interesting themes that are packed into this novel, such as exploring trans identities, and political issues. So it really feels like it's not going to be a surface level horror story, that it's going to go a lot deeper. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Next is a horror novel that I've been looking forward to for quite some time and I've been specifically saving it for the autumnal season. It's The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. Now I've never read any of this author's previous works. This will be my first experience, but I think this sounds like a book that I'm going to really enjoy. It's about a woman who's named Mouse, and I'm assuming that's a family nickname, and she's tasked with cleaning out her grandmother's house after she's passed away. And the thing is, her grandmother's house is out in the woods, it's quite remote, 
And when she gets there, she realizes it's not going to be such an easy task as her grandmother was a hoarder. And as she starts to go through her items and organizing everything, she finds letters and journals that basically seem like her grandmother was losing her mind. There's a lot of rambling. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense to Mouse. And then as she's carrying on, she realizes that in these woods, she may not be alone and that her grandmother's incoherent journaling may actually have some truth to it. So... I think this sounds fantastic. I've heard nothing but great things about T. Kingfisher's books when it comes to horror and fantasy, so I'm really hoping that this will be a good kind of folky, weird horror story. Then I have Things We Say in the Dark by Kirsty Logan. This is a horror short story collection, and I've been making an effort to try to read more contemporary short story collections, so this is on my list, and I'm really looking forward to it because it's basically modern fairy tales, there's paranormal tales, and then there's straight up horror fiction. And the themes in this involve exploring women's fears, isolation and alienation. And it's meant to be a really raw read. So I'm hoping this will be as good as everyone who's read it says it is. I'm really not sure what to make of this. And I've never read this author before, but I feel like I really recognize the name for some reason. I'm hoping to try to make a uh, contemporary horror short story collection video in the near future. So I feel like I need to read this in order to make that. Sticking with the short stories, I'm going to also be reading Gothic Tales by Elizabeth Gaskell. So this is another horror short story collection, obviously all centered around Gothic Tales. I have read a handful of the short stories in this over the last couple of years. I find that when it comes to short story collections, I'm much better off with reading them front to back in one binge go rather than picking them up now and again, because I'm just not going to remember that. I don't really remember, aside from the fact that I enjoyed some of the stories in this, what they were about or anything like that. So I feel like to get my money's worth out of this, I'm just going to read it all in one go, like it is an actual novel. These are some fantastic tales in this, and Elizabeth Gaskell is an author that I really want to read more from. And also I just want to promote that there is this copy of her gothic tales because I feel like everyone else knows her for North and South and all that sort of thing and not for the fact that she also wrote some spooky stuff as well. Then I have Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I feel like if you're going to make an autumn TBR, it's not an autumn TBR until Neil Gaiman is on that list somewhere. And this is one that has been on my shelf for a little while and I don't really know all that much about Norse mythology or folklore and this is meant to be told in a kind of linear fashion. It's also meant to be a great book for beginners who are learning about Norse mythology for the first time so as a beginner I will be the judge of that and hopefully the reviews will be correct. Then I have one of the most quintessential autumnal reads, It's Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. Now this isn't a book that I would typically pick up on the plot synopsis, but I feel like this is going to be a great palate cleanser considering the majority of books that I'm going to be reading this season are horror novels and I feel like when I'm a bit burnt out or I just need a break from reading disturbing stuff, this is going to be a godsend. So this is about two sisters who've grown apart as adults and after a tragedy hits, they are brought back together in their family home and they were always regarded as outcasts within their town. Their family have always been blamed for anything bad that has happened within the town because it's believed by the townsfolk that they have some sort of magic ability and that they may be cursed and together they must work in order to find a way out of undoing this curse and in order to move on together and basically it's like a book about like sisterly love and bonding and the importance of family and all that sort of thing. So obviously like I said this doesn't really sound like something that I'd normally gravitate towards but I just feel you know it is the season for kind of spooky witchy stuff and I want to read more books centered around witches and I'm going to be re-watching Charmed this season too. So hopefully it will all kind of like tie itself in together and I'll just have a really nice kind of witchy vibe autumnal season. Another super anticipated read. It is Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez and this is her first full length novel. And let me tell you, is it full length? It is a chunky chunky book. I believe it's over 700 pages long, but apparently it doesn't read like that. Apparently it reads like it's shorter because people enjoy it so much. But this is quite a dark story. It follows a father and son and it's set between Argentina and England and it jumps back and forth in time somewhat. But 
Basically, this father and son have recently been bereaved of the mother in their family and together they're united in their grief and decide to go on a road trip to visit her ancestral home. And once they get there, they realise that her family are not at all what they expected them to be. And then they find themselves in this really dangerous situation as her family are basically a cult who refer to themselves as the Order, and they are doing anything within their power in order to achieve immortality. And now that the mother has passed away, her destiny has fallen on her son. And now this group have her son in their clutches. And it's one of those horror stories that I love that has that trope of how far a parent will go to protect their child. Um, so it sounds fantastic. It really is something that I've seen a lot of really interesting reviews about it. It seems to be very thought provoking. And the fact that there is a blurb on this by Alan Moore basically tells me everything I need to know. Like how incredible is that? Like that is such a goal if you're an author to impress Alan Moore. I could know nothing about this book and that blurb alone would have impressed me. I'm hoping to read this quite soon. Like I have been procrastinating a little bit because I like the fact that I have it to look forward to, but then I'm also like, but yeah, but I actually have to read it now. <laughs> so yeah, I cannot wait for this. Next, I have Girls Against God by Jenny Val. So this is a book that I find that a lot of people who've read it struggle to give a plot synopsis about. And even reading like the blurb online, it was kind of a bit vague. It seems to follow a few different characters from what I can gather. And it's set in Norway and kind of focuses on Christian fundamentalism versus the black metal music scene. And even though I'm not a huge fan of black metal, like I, well, I listened to Venom, so they were basically the originators, but I know a whole heap about the scene, about how it came to be. It's a very, very interesting story. I also find that the elitism that happened within that music scene is also fascinating. This seems to be about a girl who wants to rebel and she gets involved within the black metal music scene. And then there seems to be a different story or a different character that get in, gets involved with a coven of witches. Again, I'm not sure if all these are like interlinked, but then there's also something about like girls getting lost in the woods. And apparently it reads in this really stream of consciousness style of writing. And that seems to be what a lot of people really struggle with with this. And I've seen nothing but praise for her other novel, Paradise Rot. But people who have gone from reading that to reading this are like, they are not in the same category whatsoever. It is described as experimental horror. So I feel like anything that has the term experimental in it is going to be either a huge hit or miss. Um, but I'm hoping based on the fact that I feel like I am armed with a bit of knowledge going into this, that I won't have the same experience that other people have when it comes to struggling with it. This obviously isn't a book for everyone, but hopefully it will be a book for me. So as we're getting into the autumnal season and winding down for the latter half of the year, I always find that this is the time of year that I start gravitating towards picking up classics again. This year has not been a great year for reading classics as I've been primarily focusing my reading on contemporary authors and now I just feel like I have like a massive hole in my life from not reading any classics so I want to kind of catch up and this is a book that I have been thinking about reading for quite some time and that book is Crime and Punishment by Foydor Dostoevsky, the ye old crime novel that has plenty of existential angst and feelings of alienation and it sounds like something that I'm going to really enjoy. So our main character is this super unlikable guy. He is living in poverty in this really rundown flat. He is plotting and planning and he only sees other people as tools in order to get what he wants. And he decides that in order to get his life together and to make something of himself that he is going to rob an elderly pawnbroker. And he does so and then it's just the whole story of him becoming unraveled by the horrific thing that he's done. I think that that is like the perfect kind of book for me and I don't feel like this is an intimidating read by any means. I think it's around five or six hundred pages long. It's one that I have been really wanting to read for such a long time. And I just feel like now is the right time to finally get into it. Another book that I've been eyeing up for quite some time and I've just been feeling like I can't pick it up because I haven't said it to a specific TBR yet is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is a book that I've been meaning to read for years. I believe it has been in a couple of previous 
uh, TBRs over the years and I just have never gotten to it. So this year I made an effort to actually pick up a copy for myself so that I would have it on hand to read it when I felt like I was finally ready to do so. And now that time has come. This is about a young woman who struggles within society. It's like a story of womanhood and finding herself and realising that the societal norms aren't really for her. And it's just kind of like one of those coming of age stories. I just really want to read it. I, I really enjoy the Bronte sisters and I haven't been disappointed by any of the works that I've read so far by any of them. Jane Eyre is one of those books that has been recommended to me time and time again. I'm just going to buckle down and get it read and hopefully really enjoy the experience. So that has been my autumn TBR. As always, let me know your thoughts if you've read any of these books and also let me know what you yourself are planning to read over this autumnal season. Do you have anything spooky planned? Do you have anything whimsical planned to get into that nice cozy wind down? And if you want to keep up with my readings outside of YouTube, you can always follow me on Instagram or TikTok. Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.